guys, what's going on? Today we're gonna to replace the battery in this Draggy. I think, we'll give it a shot. I bought this about a year ago, it's been laying around, never really used it, the battery died. Now it doesn't work. You plug it in and all you get is a red blinking light, it never actually charges, never connects to the phone. So it's about to throw this in the trash and buy another one and I thought, you know what? Let's try to put a new battery in here. We can have some fun with this. I think we'll make a good addition to the channel, get some cool stats and info. So let's try it. Okay, at first glance, this appears to be a pretty sealed up unit. It's a USB port over here, a light, and it feels pretty solid. Although on the ends here, I do feel some indentations. So hopefully there's some plastic clips we can pop open here, or maybe even screws we can remove. I think first thing we need to do is peel back the sticker. Oh, those are the magnets I were feeling. But there's a screw there all the same, so that's good. Awesome, two screw holes. Yep, definitely the magnets. I see two little slots on the opposite ends here where we can potentially hook something in here and get this open. Oh, it's working. Oh, look at that. So there's a battery right here. Hmm, might have to unsolder one of these two ends. Well, this ends probably directly into the battery. I'm gonna guess solder out that end there. I see some more screws. Go ahead and remove this circuit board. Oh, cool, there's the uh, electronics. And I see those two wires come through here. So I'm gonna lacquer it right there, those two tips right there. Should be able to separate the battery from this back cover here. It's on there fairly good. Double-sided tape, maybe. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yep, just some double-sided tape right there. Battery is out. And hey, look at that. A part number. I bet we can buy one of these. A little bit of adhesive, sort of like hot glue, just to keep the wires there. Oh, that just came right off. Super easy. We can see positive sits at the top side. Negative down low towards the edge of the board. I'm gonna go grab the soldering iron and get these two loose. Okay, so normally for electronics like this, I have a little stand that would grip the circuit board and hold it there so I can have my free hands to work on soldering. But I noticed my camera was shaking all over the place, so the holder is holding the camera and I'm just gonna freehand this. <laughs> so let's see, uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, now the way that came out, I'm holding the wire at the bottom here, and I'm actually got a slight amount of pressure between the circuit board and my fingers, so when the solder goes soft, the wire just pulls right out. Hey, look, I got a new battery, overnight from Amazon, for like 10 bucks, not too shabby. Looks to be about the same part number, same voltage, rating, the only difference is it has this electrical connector on. Would be nice if we could have just swapped it plug. But we're going to go ahead and cut that off. Now, when you cut that, don't just snip straight across like that. You're going to create a short circuit across your battery. Split the wires and cut them one at a time. Much safer. Old battery is all out. New battery ready to go in. Okay, we got the first little wire through the hole there. Try and solder this on. It's kind of delicate now because we don't want to touch the first one and short the battery out. So now let's go ahead and plug it in and test it before we close this all up. See what happens. As you can see, it's actually, what's that, four LEDs that act as one LED on the case. Kind of neat. I plugged it in and I let the battery charge up. And you can tell by the blue LED, it now syncs up with the phone. It looks like it's working. I'm going to go ahead and close this back up. Rear cover going back in. That should be able to squeeze down in there like that. Screw holes line up. Put the battery in there. Back on the double-sided tape. Boy, that's a tight fit. Barely gets in there. Okay. Put those wires down. All right, last but not least, let's get the uh, sticker back on. Now obviously yours will vary depending on what vendor you bought it from. 
I really like 1320s, so I chose to support them. And boom, backlight new. It's even still connected to the phone. All right, well, I think we need to go test this now. Okay, we got a working uh, drag gear again. How cool. So we'll make some use of this on the channel. I think it'll be fun. That little test hit there was just in the Daily Driver Jeep. Uh, it said it was in 2000 some DA. It's because it's really hot and humid out. I'm actually right at sea level. Uh, just cruising out with the AC on, punch it. Not too shabby for what it is. Now, as far as this draggy, there's not a whole lot of documentation out. In fact, there's like none that I can find on these things. So I was curious about why my battery died so quick and I did a little bit of playing around and experimenting with it. And here's what I found. The battery in here is always on. It never turns off. Like right now, it's on. It's listening for my phone, waiting for a connection. So that's draining the battery. And that's why within about two to three weeks, it'll no longer connect to your phone. You need to power it up, you know, plug it in, charge it up again. So that, that creates a problem because it's a lithium ion battery and these batteries do not like to be stored in a discharged state. So if you just let it drain down and die like I did and you let it sit, your battery dies. On the flip side, if you just plug in the charger and just leave it on the charger all the time, these batteries don't like being fully charged all the time either, and it's gonna die all the same. So your real, only real option here is to just let this thing drain, you know, as it does, and then plug it in probably every three weeks to a month or something and let it charge back up. Much like your cell phone, you know, just charging, discharging, keep the battery going. It's kind of cumbersome. I don't know why they made them like that. In hindsight, I kind of think maybe I should have put a little micro switch on the side. Once the battery is discharged about halfway, which is where these batteries like to be stored, you could just click it off. And you could literally store it for years. Um, I've had lithium ions from RC toys stored literally for years and years, and they just charge up and work fine as long as you store them at the correct voltages. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I might go back and mod this or just keep it in regular use for now and see how it goes. So hope that helps some of you guys out there with some dead batteries, get them fixed and going, and look forward to seeing more of this on the channel. See you later.